Hello. So a few weeks ago, I asked what you guys want me to like post on YouTube. I feel like kind of cringy saying that, but it's fine. I asked what you would like to see or would like for me to talk about. And one thing was advice. And so then I asked what you need advice on and then I screenshotted what you guys said. I drink so much coffee. I'm having like difficulty breathing. Whew, I'm like out of breath. And I need to get ready because we're going to a family dinner. So I thought I would do my makeup while I try to answer these or like give advice or whatever. Okay, I haven't even looked at these things that I screenshotted. Okay, this one says how to stay positive throughout crappy weeks. Basic positive mentality. Okay, also this is the CC Plus Cream by IT Cosmetics. Shade neutral medium. This is what I use on my face. I just do like this much. So how to stay positive during crappy weeks. What helps me that I've been doing recently a lot which I think has just boosted my like overall happiness and like mental state is I have been, this sounds kind of dumb, but like thinking about like what I'm thankful for. And usually I do it like when I'm like praying, but you don't have to be religious to think of what you're thankful for. Even when you're like having a shitty or bad, sorry, there's still things to be thankful for, right? You can still say, I'm so thankful that I get to spend time with my friend today. I'm so thankful that I woke up. I don't have a stuffy nose. We often overlook the things that we're used to maybe, you know? You don't think to say, like, I'm so grateful that I have a roof over my head. Anyway, so just being thankful for things. That being said though, if you're sad, you're having a bad week, things are just not going right, that doesn't mean that you're not allowed to be sad. And that is something that I feel like is important too because you're allowed to be sad. That doesn't make you a negative person. It's not bad to be sad. It's not bad to feel your emotions. Just don't let it consume you. So what I just did there is, this is the Tarte Shape Tape in Shade Fair. I just put it under my eyes and then here and then I usually don't put it on my nose, but I actually have a pimple literally on the arch of my nose or the bridge of my nose. Also, journaling is really good. I love to journal, but I just sometimes don't. I just often don't do it, to be completely honest. What I really like to do is when I'm driving by myself, I don't listen to music a lot of the time because to me, that's like sometimes my only time to be by myself some time to gain some like mental clarity I feel like for me at least I will think about you know my goals and my ambitions or I'll do some daily affirmation or some like manifesting I think that it gets really overwhelming when we when you don't have time to just like take a second and like think and breathe and like be like what am I doing we get so caught up in the motions of life the to me like my time that I feel alone is when I'm driving and so that's why I try to not even I I try, like I'm just like so used to it now that I just don't listen to anything when I'm driving alone. To conclude this one, set aside time to think by yourself and to really feel your emotions. So thinking about what you're thankful for, I would really recommend doing that. It's just like good to be thankful. It's good to acknowledge there's always something to be thankful for. Makeup wise, this is what I did. Becca highlighter in shade Lilac Geode and then Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Doing good academically in college, I'm becoming discouraged very quickly. In college, I am really proud of myself for this. I think I balanced my social life and my academic life really well. I feel like I studied enough and wrote my papers and read enough and you know got all my work done. Like, I did enough to do well. I got good grades and stuff but I also hung out with people enough. I went to enough social events. I made friends in class that's a big one actually making friends in class um first of all making friends in class they could actually end up being your friends second of all having people to motivate you people who are doing the same work as you people you can ask for help people who you can ask for advice from relate to i think it's super important to make friends in your class start studying with people if you surround yourself with people who are doing the same things as you i think it's really important to have a support team it's, it's really all about balance because if you're only doing your homework you're only reading you're only focusing on 
academics, you're gonna burn out, I feel like. That's not to say some weeks, you're only gonna be studying, you're only gonna be doing your homework, you're not gonna see your friends. Also study dates, that kind of is like a perfect balance between social interaction and academic success. How do you stay yourself? This is the NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel, and it's just clear gel. This is the Goof Proof Brow Pencil. I just feel like this one has less hair, so I kind of fill it in where I feel like it's missing. Okay, how do you see yourself? I guess what I think, I don't know how to answer this. It's important to remember that everyone is different. Everyone is on their own individual path with their own individual thoughts, and no one is better or worse than one another you know we're all just different we're all facing our own you know inner demons our own successes and how you say yourself is you just stay true to what you're thinking or what you want to do when you realize that everyone has this issue kind of of like you know what am i supposed to be doing how do I want to dress or how do I want to act? What do, I don't know, you know? Everyone's like going through that. Realize too that no one cares about you as much as you care about yourself. People are only, I think I've already said this on like another question thing, but people are mostly just thinking about themselves. And once you realize that, it's so much easier to be happy because you're not consumed by, well, I wonder what they think about me because they're probably not thinking about you at all. It's more important that you think highly of yourself. You know, also, how do you expect other people to like you if you don't even like yourself? So I think it's important to, it's important. I've said it like 20 times. But it's important to like yourself and to be true to yourself. Yeah, that's what I gotta say about that. Okay, how do you cope when your boyfriend goes out with his friends? insecurities in relationship dot 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 i used to honestly hate when dylan would go out without me because random girls would like dm me being like i see your boyfriend's here like why aren't you here like he's talking to everyone he's flirting with everyone like and then i would just get so in my head and blah blah, blah. so what i learned is no amount of worrying anxiety control will keep someone from doing what they want to do dylan if he wanted to cheat on me if he wanted to break up with me if he wanted to flee the country he can and would right in your relationship if your boyfriend is going out with his friend for starters i think you should feel comfortable enough to trust him and if you don't bring up your insecurities with him and what you're worried about and talk about it because he should be able to go out without you and spend time with his friends without you just as you should be able to go out without him and spend time with your friends without him i think communication is really important because it's like how how is your boyfriend supposed to know you don't like when he does this or that if you don't tell him usually this would be like my makeup like my daily makeup i'd be done but i think i might put some eyeshadow on i normally don't wear eyeshadow but since my hair is darker now i'm kind of in the mood also i am no makeup guru I probably didn't need to say that, but yeah. I wish I had done this first. Okay, this one is body image and confidence. I have been fortunate enough to have grown up with a very uplifting and body positive family. So to be completely honest, I have never, like, I don't want to say I've never been insecure about my body because that's not true. Obviously, there's days where I'm like, Oh, I'm bloated or like, oh, I don't want to wear this top because I don't like how my arms look in it or whatever. Like, I obviously have those types of days, but overall, I really like my body. That's a weird thing to say, but I know my body is not perfect, perfect, whatever that even means. I definitely could have a bigger butt or a skinnier this or that or whatever, but overall, I'm very happy with my body because I think people are born in all shapes and sizes and grow into, you know, being all shapes and sizes. I'm 5'8 and weigh 
whatever I weigh. But someone who is 5'2", who weighs the same as me, obviously we're gonna look different. Obviously someone who is 6'4", and weighs the same weight as me, we're gonna look different. People, I mean, people who are also 5'8", are gonna have different bodies than me. I think too, like, society puts so much pressure on looks, obviously, as I'm like doing my makeup. I spend a lot of time naked. Like, I love being naked. And I think that that has honestly helped me to be comfortable with my body. Not in like a weird way, but just, I just feel comfortable and content with how I look. Also, I think it's messed up that women's bodies are like a trend. Some people wanna look like Kylie Jenner. Some people wanna look like Kendall Jenner, you know? And then it's like over the years, being really curvy is in style, being really skinny is in style. That is so messed up to me, that it's like a style for how your body looks. Like it's a body. Like if you have like a brain and like a beating heart, you're good, okay? It doesn't matter if your thighs are a little thicker or, you know, your arms jiggle. Like, who cares? Like, and what really bothers me, sorry, this isn't even body positivity, this is just me ranting, is when men have something to say about a woman's body. The amount of times I have heard a man speak on a woman's body, like, oh, like if she did squats, that would be hot. If she would lift some weights so her arm, or like, Ugh. I do not think a man should ever comment on a woman's body. I don't think any person should comment on another person's body in a negative way. That gets me like really heated, especially when it's from a man. So anyway, this is what I look like now. I'm gonna curl my hair. My ex-boyfriend, while we were dating, he told me, when we first started dating, you were so much skinnier. It was so much hotter. Like, okay, Jack the Skeleton. And look, I still remember that to this day. I thought that was so rude. I think body positivity, how you be positive about your body. You just have to realize that bodies are amazing. And if yours is working and functioning properly, you are lucky. And that should be enough. And not to say that you shouldn't eat healthy or shouldn't work out or anything like that. But to conclude, I would just encourage you to be naked as most as possible. As much as possible. <laughs> That's my advice on that. Okay, this advice question thing says relationships and getting into a relationship and how do you make it last? So what I have to say about that is setting boundaries, communicating, being honest, being loyal, being a good listener, open to hearing your partner's thoughts and feelings and opinions, not being defensive, realize that you're a team and you're working together versus the problem, not you versus your partner. However, I think when you're in a relationship or you know, you're starting, you're like just beginning a relationship or whatever, you shouldn't be focused on wanting to make it last. You should be focused on the present. I feel like you put too much pressure on the relationship if you are always thinking of like not that you shouldn't think of the future but if you're always focused on like making it last then i feel like you're not really focusing on like what's in front of you but yeah i just think communicating and being honest and setting boundaries those are like the most important things in my opinion you know, and what i mean by setting boundaries is like you know it's not going to be the most fun conversation and it's not going to be the most easy conversation but for example what you consider to be like cheating or unfaithful might be different than what your partner thinks is cheating or being unfaithful so you should talk about like what you think is okay and what you think is not okay and again that's like an awkward thing to talk about but i think it could save you from getting into a lot of fights and arguments in the future because you already have set and established a boundary. Dating. I think it is so important to date people. And what I mean by dating is like going on dates with different people, getting to know different people. So here's my thing. I think you should be really open to who you go on dates with. If someone asks you to grab a coffee, to go to dinner, I mean, unless you're completely uninterested, but like meeting new people is fun. Going on dates is fun. And like, it's all part of the experience of life. I think that is something that you should not be closed off to. However, I think you should be very selective with who you choose to call your boyfriend or girlfriend or partner or someone you choose to be exclusive with. A lot of times we want to get into a relationship so bad and then you like don't even really know a person then you start becoming boyfriend girlfriend exclusive and then you realize oh, I don't 
know about this and then at this point you've already slept with them and you've already attached emotion to them and then it's so hard to break up and blah 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 and then it's a whole cycle of heartbreak and whatever else when it comes to just going on dates, you should be really open and excited. Even if you don't end up being in a relationship with them, you could still be friends or not. And then you could just say, yeah, I did that. And it was a horrible date. And then you have a good story to tell at your next date. <laughs> okay, another tip for dating. Always be yourself. Never be what you think the other person wants you to be. Always be yourself. Because what if you do end up dating this person like in a relationship and then you haven't been yourself and then all of a sudden you do be yourself and then they're like, well, you said you were like this, or you said blah blah blah, or whatever, you didn't act like this before. I just think it's better to be yourself, so then you're in a relationship with someone you can be yourself with. And then that's how you can make your relationship last, is again, you're honest with yourself about who you are, and you're honest with the other person about who you are. And that also goes along with, don't get into a relationship if you don't have like a secure sense of who you are. Because then that's just a whole different mess. Like when me and Dylan started dating, I seriously never wanted to date again. I seriously wanted to be single forever. And then me and Dylan started hanging out and it was like, oh, I like him. It just happened and it worked out because I think we both were like happy being single. And if you're not happy being single and happy by yourself, how are you gonna be happy in a relationship? Also, another tip, <laughs> my friend growing up, her dad used to always say, life is hard enough. Don't spend it with someone who makes your life harder. And I think about that a lot because life is hard enough and why would you want to be with someone who is making it harder? Okay, creating meaningful friendships. I think you create meaningful friendships by, again, just like in a romantic relationship, being yourself, being open to the potential of a friendship. Like after I hang out with someone, I either think, wow, that was so fun, I had a really great time, or I think, oh, like, I don't know how I feel about that, or I didn't really like that this person said that. Whatever feeling you have while you're with the person and after you're with the person, that kind of, to me, shows me whether I want to be their friend or not, or if I like being their friend or not. A meaningful friendship too. You should be able to feel like I could call you crying and you'd be there for me, or I ask you for advice because I trust you, or you ask me for advice because you trust me, or you talk about real things, your future, your goals, your ambitions, or your insecurities. Okay, so I think that's all I'm gonna do for right now. I'm gonna finish my hair and then I'll show you my hair and my final look. This is like a little much, I feel like. Whoa! I get permission. But you look so fine. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to see this? Irinjiga! I bought Dylan that sweatshirt. So anyways, okay. Anyways, I'll be rocking this scent uh, today to go out to dinner. It's my Gucci Guilty, I just picked it up. It's very fresh. Babe, I just sprayed myself. Why wouldn't you go somewhere else? <laughs> I want so I could show them. Now I'm gonna smell like a It's really very fresh, things. very uh, wintry. Okay, well, thank you for watching this beautiful video. Stay hydrated. Okay, see ya.